I mostly use Final Cut Pro when I'm editing. However, I know a lot of you guys have iMovie and in this video, I'm gonna to put together a comprehensive guide on how you can edit like a pro by just using iMovie. And when I say a pro, I mean, this is an edit that you'd be able to send to a client or you could use for your own marketing purposes if you're a business, or even if you've just got a YouTube channel and you wanna to throw together some high quality videos. In the description, I will leave all the timestamps for all the different parts of this video, so if there's a specific thing you're here for, just click ahead and you can jump around and do whatever. But let's get straight into it now. Once you have opened iMovie, you're gonna to wanna to create a new project. So you're just gonna click on create new and then movie. So once we have opened up iMovie, it's then time to create a new event to import our clips into. So I'm just gonna click below this iMovie library section and I'm gonna create a new event. I'm gonna name this event whatever I want to, but in this case, I'm gonna call it footage. Once I've done this, I'm then gonna click import media and I'm gonna find my clips which are on my desktop. Once I've selected them, I then click Import Selected. So the next stage in the edit is to roughly assemble the clips in the timeline, just so we can get a feel for the whole video. In order to import the clips, you simply just click and drag onto your timeline like so. A quick tip so you don't have to adjust the clip in the actual timeline itself is if you want to set your in point in the event, just click the I button on your footage and then to set the out point, just press O. You can then drag this in and it saves you a bit of a job in the timeline. Okay, so once I have imported all of my clips and set them in the timeline to the length that I want them, I am going to import a song. So to do this, I'm going to go file and import media. Again, my song is just saved onto the desktop. Once your song is in the timeline, you can adjust the volume by dragging up or down this bar on the actual waveform itself. And to fade our audio in, we can drag this circle over here just in for how long we want our fade to last. And we can do the same at the end to fade it out. The next part is probably gonna be the trickiest part to get the hang of, and that is speed ramping. To put it simply, Speed ramping or time remapping is where you slow down or speed up your footage in order to create that dramatic and creative effect. So in order to apply a speed ramp, you must first select the area of footage that you want to slow down. In order to do this, I'm gonna bring up the range selector by holding the R key, and I'm also then gonna drag the area of footage that I do wanna slow down, like so. Once you have selected your area, you're then gonna come up to the time remapping button, click that, and I'm gonna set my speed to slow and 50%. Once you're happy with the speed on this part of the footage, it's then time to choose what you want to do with the rest of your footage. In this case, I'm gonna speed up the rest of this shot. So in order to speed up the rest of the footage, I'm just gonna drag this circle inwards like so, and that'll just squash up that bit of footage. I'm just gonna show you once again how to speed ramp with this clip, which is slightly different. So I'm gonna first find the part that I want to slow down. So it's gonna be this middle section here focusing on the grass. So I'm gonna hold R and I'm gonna select this section once I'm happy with my selection, I'm gonna click the time remapping button and I'm gonna click my speed to slow. I'm happy with 50%, so I'm just gonna run with that and I'm then gonna just squash these little parts up just to speed them up. So you're basically speeding up as you slow down, like so. So if we watch that back, you can see that that's applied nicely. Okay, so another thing that I like to do is sync up the speed ramps to my music. So in order to do this, I'm first gonna identify the beats that I want my speed ramps to transition on. So I'm gonna go along my music track now and I'm gonna press the M key, which will just set a marker on each beat that I wanna synchronize to. Once I'm happy with where my beats are, I'm then just gonna adjust my speed ramps by dragging the circle inwards to make them fit with each beat. Doing so will actually speed up the little part in the middle that is slow, it won't speed it up 100%, so we've still got some nice speed ramps in there and it'll still be smooth. Okay, so the next step is about adding some sound effects to your video on top of the music that you've got. This just adds an extra dimension to your video. I generally try and film my sound on the day, so making sure that my camera has the sound switched on, but failing this, Free Sound has some really great free downloads that you can just search up and find what will apply for your video. Just make sure you don't forget to fade in and out your audio because otherwise it can sound like it can come in quite abruptly. It just adds an extra layer of professionalism to your video. Another great audio effect that you can use to enhance your speed ramps is in fact muffling the areas when your footage goes slow. 
if you were watching something on TV or film and it slow everything slowed down, the audio would change to match that. This must register on an emotional level. I essentially will just select the audio layer which I have added, find out where my footage slows down, I will then split this layer by pressing Command B, and then go to the end and find where it resumes, Command B as well, and then this bit in the middle, this is the part where my video is slowed down. I'm then just going to go into the effects right above the video clip, and click audio effect, and then muffled audio. This will simply then go from being non-muffled into muffled. The problem I would have straight away is that this is just too, it's too abrupt. It comes in too quickly. In order to fix that, I will just drag over the previous sound like so, and just fade that out. So in fact, you'll have a bit of a transition where the muffle comes in and the same on the muffle. I will just fade that in and I'll fade it out as well. And once again, just drag this so it overlaps and fade that in. So now you can see we'll have our normal audio will fade out into the muffled audio, which is slowed down. And then as the video speeds up again, our normal audio comes back in. Okay, so adding a color correction is fairly simple. So if we click on the color palette at the top, we can add some contrast by adjusting the sort of rainbow slider. Then the middle right slider along the left hand side adjusts the contrast. Uh, if you move that up, you're going to increase the contrast or down, you're going to decrease it. You can also adjust the black point and the white point, essentially how dark or bright our footage is in the darkest and brightest parts. Uh, once you're happy with that, it's also possible to adjust the color temperature. This is if you've got a bit of a blue tint or a, a yellow tint on your footage, you can just adjust that there. Another little extra thing that we can do to our footage to make it look a bit more cinematic is add some black cinematic bars. These essentially fake the look of the 2351 aspect ratio, which is used a lot in cinema with anamorphic lenses. But to do this, you just literally download the PNG file, which you can find on Google by typing in cinematic black bars, and then simply drag that over the top of your footage. It is so simple, but this is something that you can do if you want to experiment with that cinematic look and it's something that I like to do from time to time. Okay, so the next thing that you might want to add is a title. So the thing I will say about iMovie, to keep it professional, just stick with the censored title. I really don't like playing around too much with all the different options, the templates that they have. I think they can look a little bit unprofessional. And uh, yeah, so I would just pick the centered title, which is literally just a little fade in and a fade out. Adjust the font size. I like to have it slightly on the smaller side, obviously depending on the project. And also just pick a clean font uh, and have a little play around with it yourself. Really, it's the sort of thing that I don't like to go overboard with it. I don't like to add too many of the effects that they have, if any, really. So just keep it simple. And yeah, I think you'll get the best result by doing that. Okay, so once you are happy with your edit and you've added your titles and coloured your footage, it's then time to share. So if you click in the top right hand corner of the screen, you can then click file and then rename it to whatever you want, of course. You're going to want to make sure that your format is selected on video and audio. Your resolution, I like 1080p, but that's just because I want the best quality possible. I'm going to go quality again, best and compression. Make sure it's set to better quality. Unless you're in a rush and you really need it to be faster, I just like to have that extra, extra bit of quality. Then you want to select where you want your video to be rendered to and click done. As you can see in the top right hand corner, you have this little circle, which will tell you where you're at with your render. And yeah, it shouldn't take too long. And then it'll just pop up, share successful. And we're all done, ready to share on YouTube or on Instagram or wherever. Okay, so that was it for today's tutorial. We've gone through everything from start to finish and I'm thinking of making this into a series. So if, if you'd like to see more iMovie tutorials, maybe more specific video tutorials, so how to edit a fitness style video in iMovie or how to edit a YouTube video in iMovie, then feel free to let me know in the comments and we'll get them made. If you have any questions about what I've done today, please leave me a comment. I've tried to cover everything and fingers crossed I did manage to do that, but if not, 
feel free to leave me a comment. There's really no excuses with iMovie. Pretty much everything that you would want to do in a piece of software, you can do in iMovie. And I was pleasantly surprised that you were able to speed ramp and even stabilize footage within it. So it's more sophisticated than you might think. So yeah, if you did enjoy, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting videos every week and also Give us a thumbs up because that really helps the channel. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed.